And a man came forward last year admitting to killing a girl and two women back in the late 1980s. Albuquerque police went back to each case file to make sure he was telling the truth. And they realized he was. As KRQE News 13 investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt shows you, in round two of his confession, in at least one of the murders, he hung around the scene and talked to police. And I'm going to let you just talk and tell me again what happened. Last July, three days after 53-year-old Paul Apodaca told investigators he'd raped and killed women in the late 1980s. I thought I would pursue her. Albuquerque police homicide detectives went to the Metro Detention Center to talk to him again. My intention was, was just to take her at knife point to rape her. This time in more detail, drawing diagrams, naming streets, Apodaca walked investigators through his crimes step by step. His first murder victim, he claims, was 21-year-old Althea Oakley, a woman he intended to rape. What happened was that I was sitting there and when she walked up, she smiled at me. She said hi and she smiled at me. That's the worst part. Have you heard someone that smiles at you? June 1988, during his security aid shift at TVI, now CNM, he says he spotted Oakley walking and attacked her. She told me I don't have any money. She said I don't have any money. After stabbing her again and again with a Swiss Army knife. And I didn't think my short little knife would be able to do that much damage. He says he left his watch at the crime scene before running away. Why did you take off your watch? So that I anticipated there would be a struggle. He says Oakley didn't have time to defend herself. Apodaca says he saw a sketch of the stabbing suspect on the news and described his younger self, then in his early 20s, as medium build, a 165-pound man. I used to think that as long as I never killed anybody, that was the ultimate sin. Everything else was okay. Once I did that, it seemed like nothing mattered anymore. He says he read reports that Oakley's boyfriend declined to take her to a movie that night, so she walked home from a UNM frat party. And I thought to myself, all I had to do was ask her to go to a movie, perhaps. Motivated by jealousy of other men and a hatred for women, he says. And every once in a while, I don't know, when that anger would rise again, I'd go out, just drive around with a rifle like that. Like a hunter. He's not a hunter, an animal. 13-year-old Stella Gonzalez was his next victim in September of 88, he says. Apodaca says he took aim at two girls crossing the bridge on Central late at night. Gonzalez was killed. A couple weeks later, he says he shot a transgender man who he thought was a woman and served jail time. That man survived. I lied to the police and told them that he had fooled me. Apodaca also described shooting another woman in the face on the west side while they were both driving and saw reports she too survived. The summer of 1989. I've been driving around the whole city with a rifle just looking for a target of opportunity. He says he was driving his orange Volkswagen when he pulled up next to Caitlin Arquette, an 18-year-old UNM student at a red light on Lomas. I raised the rifle and I shot at her. He says he watched her red car cross the median and crash into a light pole. Then he parked his VW and walked up to her. A vehicle pulled up in front of me. An officer came and asked what had happened. I told him that I had seen the car there that I was going to investigate. He says the officer took down his information. I took my name and number and then I drove away. Weeks later, he says a female APD detective paid him a home visit asking about the murder. In 1995, Apodaca was sentenced to 20 years for raping a young family member and had another visit in prison, an investigator asking questions about Arquette's murder. She was a private detective hired by, by Caitlin's mother. 
While in prison, he says he read the book Who Killed My Daughter, written by Arquette's mom, Lois Duncan. My daughter was a woman desperately trying to figure out why somebody had done that to her daughter. And I spent the last year in jail just crying and crying over all the things I'd done. He says he's tired and wanted to come clean. It's not so much about relieving myself of that as it is to bring closure to the people at home. Gabrielle Burkhart, KRQE Investigates. Mm. APD says detectives recently spoke to the woman that Apodaca shot in the face. The statute of limitations has run out in that case. Apodaca claims he only told one person about his secret crimes. That was his mother when she was visiting him in prison years ago. His mother died before he came forward to police.